everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos. I'm Joey Smokey and in this episode we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law, you say? Yes, it's perfect. Wow, fancy. By the way, I'm Kevin Martin. And we'll be presenting this episode. So you say this is the perfect gas law. Yes, it's so <laughs> perfect that it's shining. Ooh, I should have brought sunglasses. Yeah, you probably should have. All right, Kevin, so I wrote out what all these different variables mean. Okay. Any chance you can figure out what we might use this equation for? All right, let me take a look. So we have pressure, volume on this side, and we have moles, and then this rate constant, whatever that is. It's basically just a constant <coughs> number. Okay. Then we have temperature. Well, this is constant, so it never changes. So I'm guessing that if we knew like three of these values, say we knew pressure, moles, and temperature, we mm -hmm. could find the other value, the volume, by right. rearranging this equation. Exactly. <clears throat> and that's what we use the equation for. It's the relationship between all these different things. And it's ideal because no matter what you have, you can always figure out, if you know three of them, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you can figure out the other one. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, but a note on how to use this equation, and that's the units that are involved with it. All right. Pressure must <clears throat> always be in atmospheres. Okay. Volume must be in liters. Yeah. Moles are moles. That's fine. That's a unit in itself. Right. And temperature is kelvins. Yes. Okay. That's very important, I would think, because if you got cel if you did in Celsius, you could end up dividing by zero. Right, which would be a bad thing. Mm hmm Yep, undefined. Mm hmm Yes. Now the reason why we have to have all those units like that is because of the rate constant here. If you look closely at the units, zero point eight two one liters times atmospheres over moles times kelvins. So basically, if you have three of those things and you're trying to figure out the other one, the rate constant will cancel out the units you don't want and leave you with the units that you do want. Well, okay, so, cause, yeah, so all the other ones go away and you'd be left with, say, liters. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's a nice way to clean things up. It very, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's right. why it's called the ideal gas law, and that's why it shows shiny. That's cool. Yes. All right. So, Kevin. You might also notice in this ideal gas law that we have inside, kind of hidden in there, some other equations. Oh, really? Yes. So if we were to, I'll get rid of all this junk down here. Okay. And let's say we were to think about the relationship between a couple of these variables and ignoring the other ones. All right. So let's say we were interested in just pressure and volume. Hmm. Do you think that you could extrapolate an equation from the relationship between those two? Hmm. Well, let me think about it. Let's see. So I notice that if we were let's let's say we want to make all the things equal out to be the same if we change values. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's say we increase pressure. Mm -hmm. So if we increase pressure, if we wanted to keep this all the same mm -hmm. number wise, then the volume would have to go down. Right. So from that I could get this. This might seem a bit familiar. P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Yes. Ooh, you know what? This is a specific law, actually. It is. This is Boyle's Law. That's right. Well. So, that's one of the equations that's, that is hidden within the ideal gas Ah, uh, that's cool. So, if you're given you know, two different pressures and one volume and ask to find the other volume, you can do that. So like if you have certain conditions before and then like one of the conditions after, then you could find the other one that happens after. Right, exactly. Well, all right then. Yep, so that's Boyle's Law. Okay. So now, let's look at a slightly different relationship. Okay. Okay. Let's say we're interested in pressure and temperature. Hmm. Again, ignoring the other ones. Okay. Well, Again, I'm going to consider, you know, number-wise. So, pressure is going up again. Mm -hmm. So, if I want this all to equal out in numbers, then I guess temp then it looks like temperature would also have to go up because what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Precisely. It has to balance out. Yep. So, from that, I can get this. P1 over T1. P2 over T2. T2. Exactly. And that looks like one French guy. Oh, that is de Lussac's law. Yes, precisely. And that relates pressure and temperature. Mm -hmm. So that's another one of the equations that you can extrapolate from the ideal gas law. 
Okay, that's okay. cool. So we've related pressure and volume and pressure and temperature. All right. Now let's relate pressure, volume, and temperature. Hmm. Probably should have done volume and temperature first. Oh, we can do that one too. Let's okay. do that. Yeah. All right. So let's work with that. So volume and temperature. All right. We'll do what I've been doing. Increase volume goes up. Yeah. Increase volume. Temperature goes up. Yep. It's kind of similar to the pressure and temperature relationship. Actually. Exactly. So it's V1 over T1 mm -hmm. equals V2 over T2. Exactly. And this is a little. This law is a little easier to pronounce. This is Charles' law. That is easy to pronounce. All Charles right. Law. Excellent. Okay. So now we have three equations: pressure and volume, volume and temperature. Yeah, volume and temperature, which we just did, and pressure and temperature. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to relate all three of them. Okay, let's do that then. Okay. So, we had, oh, yes. So we had P1 V1 equals P2 V2. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Mm -hmm. And V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Exactly. Okay. Well, it looks like that, uh, you know, since P and V are at the top together, and both of them, both of them have the T's underneath, mm -hmm. I could combine them into something like this. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. All right. So Fantastic. The combined gas law. That's right. All right. That's okay. cool. So, there we go. What is that? Four equations now? Yeah, but I've noticed something else. Yes, what is that? We didn't mention relating, say, moles and volume. Ah, that's a good point. Because, you know, more amount of something you have, it kind of stands to reason, you know, it would change the volume. Right, it's like having a balloon that you magically make it bigger or something. Yeah. You're going to change the stuff inside. Okay. All right. Let's try that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and erase all this stuff. So, if volume goes up, well, moles also go up, you know, what do you want to size? Exactly. And then I get this, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Mm -hmm. Now, this may or may not be in your book, but this is a separate kind of law or equation. This is called Avogadro's law. It makes sense it's called that because when you think Avogadro, you think moles. Right, exactly. Or if you think avocados, you think guacamole. Exactly. Wish we like to do that around here. Mm -hmm. So that would be a fifth equation, I suppose. Yes. So do you think we could relate pressure in moles and temperature in moles and all that too? Oh, uh, yeah, but really, I think we've covered all the important ones. And besides, right. if we really need to do that, it's not that hard to, you know, get, get those equations from this. Exactly. So basically, since this is the ideal gas law, if you understand what's going on conceptually behind this equation, you can extrapolate any equation you need just based on that. So if you remember, PV equals NRT, Pivnert. Yep. Yep. Pivnert. Pivnert. You're going to be able to figure out everything else. So yeah. All right. That so is a very, that is a perfect equation. It is. So we got five equations. We got this, well, six actually. We got this one, Avogadro's Law, Charles' Law, Boyle's Law, and the other two were? Daily socks and combined gas law, which if you want to, you can go back in the video and look look at those and write them down. Yep, exactly. That's basically all you got to know. All this right. is the introduction to gas laws.